with some breaking inputs that have just come in from Kuala Lumpur, where Malaysia's former Prime Minister Najib Razak has now been found guilty on all charges in the multi-million dollar 1MDB scandal. Now, the ex-Prime Minister, remember, was accused of siphoning off funds to the tune of nearly about $10 million from a state-run fund that he'd established while he was Prime Minister. Now, he's been found guilty on all seven counts of money laundering, criminal breach of trust and abuse of power charges that had been levelled against him. Now, on the abuse of power charges, the court found Najib guilty of using his position as the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister to get loans approved for 1MDB. The judge also ruled that the transfer of about $10 million from 1MDB to Najib's personal account was simply not justified. Now, the judge further went on to state that the mastermind of the scam, Joe Lowe, was indeed working for the former Prime Minister. Now, the court has also rejected the notion that the ex-Prime Minister's accounts were being managed by Joe Love and therefore he was unaware of the fund transfer. The Saudi donation angle was also trashed by the Malaysian court which said that while Najib claimed that the donations were made in 2010, the issue came to the fore only two years later in the year 2012. Now, for more perspective in terms of this very high-profile case that is being held in Kuala Lumpur today, we are joined in by our guest, Azmi Hassan, who is joining us live from Kuala Lumpur. Mr. Hassan, thank you very much indeed for joining us on Vyond again. We spoke with you a little while back at the time when the sentence was being read out for the former Malaysian Prime Minister. And the verdict that has now come out is that he's been found guilty on all seven charges that have been levelled against him. Uh, yeah, it's true. I think uh, the judge made a very uh, sound uh, decision, uh, not based on political pressure or otherwise. Uh, I think uh, we as a Malaysian have to accept uh, the judge's uh, decision, whether we are, we are the supporters of Najib or, or the opposition of Najib. And also, what does it mean for the politics of Malaysia? Najib Razak has, of course, come out and said that all these allegations that were leveled against him that have now been proven in a court of law, that they're all a political witch hunt. This has been done by the party in power presently. Uh, yes, uh, the charges was brought by the uh, party, uh, by, the, by the government uh, Bodies, which is the opposition right now. And Najib supporters sees that as a political persecution. Uh, but uh, by found uh, guilty of seven charges, uh, one thing for sure is that uh, Najib, uh, Mr. Najib's uh, political future as a member of parliament for Pekan, I think, is in jeopardy. Uh, even though he has a lot of uh, means, uh, first is a court of appeal and also the federal court and maybe pardoned by the king, uh, but it's still a long way to go. Uh, but again, it put a jeopardize on uh, Najib's political future as a member of parliament. You know, I'd like you to talk to us a bit more about the political future of Najib Razak here, because he says that this is a political witch hunt. He's been found guilty of all seven charges that were leveled against him. Does this mean that his political future is over? Uh, the problem is that uh, the current government, uh, they have a very thin majority. And it is expected that uh, general election, a snap general election will be called. And the problem is that uh, Mr. Najib, even though he has been found of guilty on the seven charges, uh, but again, he still hasn't exhausted his process mm -hmm. of appeal. Uh, so the problem is that a status quo will remain. Uh, if a general election is called now, Mr. Najib can stand as a member of parliament. But again, I don't think so. It's a wise decision for Najib to stand for election, even though he has a long process uh, in terms of appeal about his conviction. Right. And also, we heard the verdict being read out. He's been found guilty. But when will the quantum of his sentence be read out? Do we have any information on that? Uh, no, the judge uh, didn't say anything about the sentencing. Uh, but again, uh, the most interesting that I think Mr. Najib expected this kind of uh, decision by the judge and he's quite confident that uh, he said that the current decision is based on the judgment of one judge because mm -hmm. in Malaysia we don't have any jury uh, trial by jury but under the court appeal there will be three trial judge uh, so he's quite confident that uh, with uh, three uh, judges uh, in the court of appeal he will get his day 
And also there's this another very interesting individual in this entire case who is presently not to be found. Now, Joe Love is said to be one of the advisors of Najib Razak. Najib Razak's, you know, camp comes out and says that all of this, you know, uh, handling of the finances was something that was done by Joe Love and Najib Razak had very little to do with the actual handling of the money. So give us a sense of what the public perception is like within Malaysia about this case and, and will Joe Love be found at all? Uh, yeah, uh, it's been a lot of news from our uh, police uh, saying that they, they know where Jolo is hiding right now, but they have a getting problem of getting uh, extradition treaty uh, from that particular country. Uh, again, uh, the, the whole public uh, know that Jolo is a key player right here, but the problem is that the judge uh, don't believe the defense uh, uh, argument that Najib has no knowledge about Jolo's doing. Uh, so I think that's the main reason why he was found of the uh, seven guilty on the seven charges. But again, talking about the public perception of Jolo, uh, it is believed that Jolo is a key player right now. And the most important thing is how to get Jolo. Uh, I think that's the, that the real, beside Jolo, there's a other, another player, one Faisal, which is a key player uh, still uh, we didn't have any grabs where this two particular key player is hiding right now. And also what happens to the one Malaysia development, Berhad, the one MDB, which, which uh, in 2009 Najib Razak had played an instrumental role in bringing about its existence. So what happens to this fund right now? Uh, one MDB is still there except that uh, the, the role that one MDB played is is, is uh, being minimized right now. Uh, we have to remember that uh, the real purpose of the sovereign wealth fund, mm -hmm. uh, we have another sovereign wealth fund, which is a Kazana National, is for our uh, for, for the nation. Except that uh, few players, few key players in one MDB misuse uh, their powers in one MDB sovereign wealth fund. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Azmi Hassan, for joining us from Kuala Lumpur and getting us all those insights into this very high-profile case. The former Prime Minister Najib Razak has been found guilty on all seven charges that were levelled against him. The sentence, of course, needs to be seen as to what will be given out by the court. Let's now shift our attention to the other 